scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. With an intention for an encounter, let him know that he means that much. Everything everything that is the language of surrender everything to someone pray press with understanding everything majesty everything everything Make sure you are praying, you are talking to your maker, your savior, and your king. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only yeah. great are you lord shali bara sobrandi ge baladam great are you lord say great are you lord sing it one more time it's your breath hey, it's your breath in our love, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our love, so we pour out our praise to you all. It's your breath. In our love, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. Everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Great are you, Lord. Majesty, we worship you, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Monarch of the Universe. We bless you, we bow our hearts in worship and we thank you for who you are and for the things that you do.
forever let Jesus be glorified for in Jesus mighty name we pray for in Jesus name we pray it is important that we cultivate the attitude of deep worship and reverence the Bible says Hebrews 11 and verse 6 that he that cometh unto God must come believing number one that he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him you don't come to his presence carelessly just to run through the routine of service you must be very intentional hallelujah you must believe that he's the rewarder of not just them that seek him them that diligently seek him bless our hearts tonight oh god in jesus name god bless you please be seated good evening everybody we're going straight to the business of tonight it remains my assignment by the grace of god to see that we are grounded and established in righteousness according to jeremiah 3 and verse 15 he says i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and he says they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding now please pay attention in order of priority the assignment of a man of god with respect to a people that have been committed to him in order of priority is to number one to help them encounter god and to grow progressively in the knowledge of the same so your encounter with the god of the bible and then methodically you continue to advance and progress in the knowledge of god prophet jeremiah said let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the strong man glory in his strength let not the rich man glory in his riches but let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me so the pride of the believer is derived from the depth of your knowledge the administration of eternal life requires a gradual and continuous knowledge of god john 17 and verse 3 jesus himself was speaking and he said this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent hallelujah so in order of priority the primary assignment of every man of god with respect to the growth and the development of the saints is to help them encounter god and to progressively grow in the knowledge of god number two the assignment of a man of god is to be able to expose the believers to the multifaceted dimensions of the kingdom exposing them to the keys of the kingdom the ways of god we'll look a bit um, we'll look at that a bit after now taking away ignorance spiritual ignorance according to ephesians 4 and verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts the assignment of the God of this world primarily is to blind the minds of God's people so that they do not come into a comprehension of the ways of God. Psalms 82 and verse 5, it says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. And you see, when it has to do with the knowledge of the ways of God, there is exactitude to that knowledge. There is precision and exactitude to the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the ways of God. When it has to do with knowing God, we will never exhaust knowing God progressively and continually layer after layer we will keep learning him even in heaven but when it has to do with the keys of the kingdom that make for the victory and the dominion of the believer the keys are finite and you can hold them with the precision the precision of a master 
you can know that you have laid hold on eternal life the bible says you can lay hold on eternal life so the next assignment of a man of god in order of priority becomes to methodically line upon line precepts upon precepts open god's people to the various layers the various facets of the kingdom life and begin to guide them methodically to understand the principles that govern excellence in every one of these areas and let me tell you it will take a long time for believers to experientially come into a comprehension of the ways of god because transformation takes time are we together and then when believers come into that understanding they are now taught the the applicability of the truths that they know you see it's one thing to have knowledge it's one thing to have understanding and not find the point of application of that kingdom truth to your life the goal of knowledge is that you are able to apply it in your life he said now that you know these things happy are you if you do them are we together that is where the principle of faith now comes in because faith in one word is obedience faith is more than action action in disobedience is not faith faith must be action in obedience hallelujah so faith is obedience the blessing is not just in the knowledge the blessing is in the obedience deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings not some all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee hallelujah you must be diligent to walk in keeping with the truths that are there this is where the place of empowerment comes because it is impossible for the human unassisted by the grace and the power of god to walk consistently in keeping with the conditions that make for victory this is where the engracing of the spirit now comes in are we together now very important and then when believers are empowered they go and return back with testimonies the testimonies are consolations to your christian experience because in your results listen carefully and in your testimonies jesus is glorified john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples 15 and verse 16 eight verses after he says ye have not um, chosen me i have chosen you and ordained you that you may go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain god desires that our fruits and our results bring glory to jesus in a very definite and a very practical way Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10 in fact verse 10 it says to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted dimensions of the wisdom of God it was to this intent that he brought Paul into the fellowship of this mystery he brought Paul. Paul said in verse 3 of the same Ephesians 3, he says, How that by revelation, Ephesians 3 and verse 3, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote uh, four times in few words, verse 4. He says, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And then he says, Which has been in other ages had been hidden not known to the sons of men but now he had revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets even by the spirit to the intent so he revealed that mystery to paul to the end that he will use that mystery and mentor and mature the body of christ that they now being matured will be able to come on full display revealing the manifold wisdom of god if that is you say amen 
it means therefore that when god gives the man of god revelation access to dimensions in god he does that with the intent that that revelation should ultimately serve the body are we together isaiah 9 and verse 8 the bible says he sent a word to jacob and the word lighted upon israel he sent a word to one man jacob but the benefit and the illumination of that word was designed to reach the entire israel every time believers are bankrupt of platforms for methodical spiritual growth the side effect is that no matter how well intentioned the believers are number one their knowledge of god will not be accurate and then number two they will not be able to come into a point of thorough understanding of the ways of god you would find out that believers continue to shadow box around principles in hope that one of them will work hallelujah the series we're about to start is intended to bring us to a higher level of spiritual understanding so that we get to a point where we are grounded and established in the knowledge of god and in his ways and then empowered to empower others also hallelujah he says for the promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are far off even those that the lord will call I do not believe that anyone should stay in church for a sufficient period of time and then be bankrupt of the requisite level of knowledge that empowers him or her to go and raise and empower others too. It's a sad and um, tragic thing that happens in church that you have believers who sit and stay in church for many years and yet you probe into the understanding of these believers you cannot find anything that justifies the investment of their time for that long ask them what they know about god ask them what they know about prayer ask them what they know about victory ask them what they know about dominion they will largely give suggestive statements no certainty can i tell you this god desires for every believer to come to a point of confidence that comes through the certainty of scripture and in every ministry and every platform that god creates that is the assignment of the man of god to the believers to bring them to a point where their knowledge is exact and their confidence is unbendable let me show you a scripture luke chapter one we'll read the first four verses i'll ask you to read somewhere along the line for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us that means believers should always have a body of spiritual knowledge that are called verse one please the things that are most surely believed among us verse two it says even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse three now it seemed good to me also haven't had what perfect understanding this is a possibility with the believer you can have perfect understanding of all things as far as the ways of god is concerned perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent theophilus why read verse 4 together please one to read that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed that by the power of instruction and mentorship you come to a point where your fears and your doubts fade away you can stand with confidence knowing that this is the key that controls this spiritual outcome hallelujah praise the name of the lord and so the lord will grant us grace and help us it is your assignment to number one be serious be serious first with god and then be fair and serious enough with your destiny you know i submit to you that um i'm almost coming to the conclusion that there are certain believers who have made up their minds that they will never be serious with god 
no matter what you preach no matter what you say whether you cry whether you jump whether you shout it to their ears they have they have seared their hearts with hot iron and they are determined to not know god and there are others who are not determined to learn the ways of god i pray that is not you in the name of jesus there must be an intention and a determination to learn the bible speaking says that in the end times that many will not have the capacity to endure sound doctrine it takes endurance more than attentiveness it takes endurance to learn doctrine doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of spiritual information that turns a student to become something exact they gave themselves acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says that they gave themselves to the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers that was the formula that built them hallelujah it will take the word of god to build and mature any believer there's no superstition about the growth and the maturity of the believer acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able so the word has an ability number one to build you up and number two to give to you an inheritance among them that are sanctified colossians chapter 1 verse 9 it defines for us the various dimensions of growth as far as knowledge is concerned that we must press into he says i do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you be filled with number one the knowledge of his will number two all wisdom wisdom is multi-dimensional and then number three spiritual understanding while you're seated i want you to pray in one minute and say yet again open my eyes oh god open my eyes i submit to your wisdom your ways are perfect the bible says the law of the lord is perfect reviving the soul pray in one minute open my eyes shali kraski dem haski de basu open my eyes give me understanding access to light in the name of jesus christ hallelujah striving for mastery part one striving for mastery part one the goal of this series is to move us beyond spiritual amateurism to levels in the spirit where every one of us can lay hold on eternal life where my life and your life begins to inexperience become a living epistle a a display of the wisdom the power and the grace of god striving for mastery holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our god hosanna hosanna Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. Coincidentally, today in the body is known as Palm Sunday. And it's a celebration of the moment Jesus had a triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And the psalmist said, ride prosperously because of truth. You don't ride just because you have a horse close to you. You ride because of truth. The courage that brings the believer into a triumphant entry in this kingdom is truth. I think I should start with a, a statement I made that I thought would, would edify us while I was in Bauchi. Um, I said how that 
it is possible for a student to have 14 over 100 say in a grading system that is per hundred and then another student can have 25 over 100 listen carefully another student can have 37 over 100 my question for you is who passed the most of the three students the one who had 37 with a grade system of a to f who qualified so the one who had 14 the one who had 21 the one who had 37 with respect to the grading system they all failed so just because you have improved from 14 to 20 does not mean you are there listen the bible says i think that should be is that first corinthians 8 2 or second corinthians 8 2 please look for it for me that he that things he knoweth anything should know that he does not know first corinthians 8 2 if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth not yet as he ought to my god that means relative to where i need to go to there is still much to be known are we together there are two reasons why jesus wept as far as the synoptic accounts give us number one was in john 11 and verse 35 at the grave of lazarus the bible says he wept jesus wept life wept the word wept why because lazarus was dead and the disciples testified they said oh how he loved him the second reason why jesus wept was when he stood over jerusalem he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you have known, even in this thy day, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. It takes high level spiritual illumination to be able to rise in life. Second Timothy chapter 2, please, and verse 5. For reference, striving for mastery, part 1. And if a man also strive for masteries the bible says yet is he not crowned except he strives lawfully if a man any man desires to strive for mastery the idea here is an olympian one who wants to engage in athletics that if that man wants to run so to win he says that man will never be crowned as the winner except he strives by the rules other versions will give you that expression that when a man wants to run in an olympic or an athlete that there are rules there are principles so there is a relationship between compliance to these principles and gaining mastery in the kingdom mastery in the kingdom is based on light and it's very very important that we understand this john chapter 1 and verse 14 let me share with you the last thought that I shared with them in Bauchi. I think this will be a great blessing to us and then we begin to establish along the lines of today's teaching. Genesis 1 and verse 5. Not John 1, 14. We're coming there. Genesis 1 and verse 5. Please look up, everyone. The Bible says, in fact, read with me. One to go. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Just stop there. The Bible says God called the light day. So in God's mind, what makes a day is not the passage of time. What makes a day is the appearance of light. That every time a man has light, he has entered his day. It is not the passage of time that determines whether your day will dawn. It is the excellency of the light that comes. God called the light day, but he called darkness night. So no matter what time of the day, if you are a possessor of darkness, you are in your night time. God called the light day. He called the darkness night. So if I want to turn my darkness or my night time today i don't have to wait for time to determine it there is a level of spiritual illumination that can turn my night today at the instance of light darkness can turn today you are in this beautiful auditorium right now 
if you had been here since morning or you don't have any access to a timepiece to know what time it is if i told you it is night now you may hardly believe is that true because the light here gives the illumination that that is equivalent to that of day can i tell you this waiting for time to turn your night to day is a total waste of time in god's mind day is equivalent to light he called the light day and the darkness he called night so as you pay attention to the things that i'll be sharing with you i pray that the light that comes from this teaching will sustain the power to turn every night today in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the first thing i want to talk about when you want to gain mastery you have to understand the first concept we are going to deal with here in part one wherever we stop we'll take um, from there next week is the spirituality of life please write it down this is a concept and a truth that most believers do not have that understanding of that life is spiritual in every way in fact when it has to do with the spirituality of life every religion i was studying to update my myself as to how many religions we have in the world and um as at the last time i checked it was now about four thousand two hundred religions so some 200 people have added the, you know the experience to the list four thousand two hundred religions and counting i can assure you that maybe except for a few most of these religions believe that the foundation of an individual's consciousness awareness or excellence is from the realm of the spirit based on his ability to make contact with the realm of the spirit the three principal religions that came out from abraham christianity islam judaism all three agree all three agree that everything that a man has is derived from the extent the health and the quality of his spirituality life and living is spiritual please write it down life and living is spiritual as simple as this concept is you can spend your life in total defeat and failure not knowing that life is spiritual we live in a world that celebrates intellect and that is wonderful we live in a world that celebrates science and that is wonderful but i must tell you that everyone who has done anything worthwhile on earth beyond beyond a normal human frequency would agree that they outsource their intelligence or whatever advantage they had from the realm of the spirit whether it's a scientist whether it's a religious leader the faith life is no exception life is spiritual romans chapter 1 and verse 20 life is spiritual the bible says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse he said the invisible things from creation are now seen they are manifest by the things that are visible so the bible tells us that there are two realms and two dimensions of reality there is what we call the invisible realm take note invisible with respect to your seeing invisible does not mean unreal invisible and visible that means for every material thing that appears listen carefully there is an invisible dimension and an invisible component to it it was apostle james who was teaching us on faith and works chapter 2 and verse 26 of james and he borrowed a phenomenon to help us understand faith and works and here's what he said for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead so anybody body there means any material vessel that does not have a spirit component back in it it does not have life are we together body there does not just mean a human body no your business is a body your ministry is a body 
everything is a body if you cannot show the spirit that empowers it then it is dead that means the formula for destroying any body is to create a system of separating it from the spirit that backs it is that true when you want to save a man from tragedy you call it deliverance how do you save that man because the conditions that the physical conditions are bodies and there is a spirit that is giving that condition life so until you create a system of separating that body from the spirit that body or that condition will still be alive i hope you know that bodies here don't just mean material human bodies troubles are bodies there is a spirit that gives them life and for as long as that spirit has not been separated from that condition it will continue to to act as though it is a living thing very powerful life is spiritual second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are unseen i would always bring your attention to this unseen does not mean unreal unseen does not mean unreal please look at me if i ask you to describe for me everything you can see on this stage you most likely will this will be talking about the monitors maybe the fans the flowers and so on and so forth but the bible tells us that in mount zion there are many other things you are not seeing the bible says there is within the midst of god's people an innumerable company of angels question where are they just because your physical sight cannot capture them does not mean they are not there because in the course of every service you will see operations whose origin is not physical you for instance when someone starts shouting under the anointing who touched the person you have a neighbor and you can't see anything between two of you so what is responsible for that extra phenomenon it tells you that there is more than you can see life is spiritual hebrews 11 and verse 3 hebrews 11 and verse 3 through faith the bible says we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear do you know what that means the mother that gave birth to anything physical is invisible now there are mothers here with children and we are able to relate with that experience because both the mother and the child are physical is that true but now imagine that a mother is invisible and you just keep seeing children you know that they come from somewhere the bible is saying that everything you see in your physical realm is only a child that the mother that gave birth to that child and continues to give birth to that child you call your physical realities is the realm of the spirit write this down please the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm very simple it will never never change the realm of the spirit governs the physical whether you are interested in being spiritual or not this is an, an information that your life depends on the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm you must understand the frailty of the physical realm with respect to the realm of the spirit that means with respect to the realm of the spirit this physical realm is very frail it is subject to change anything you see that is physical under a certain condition the realm of the spirit can superimpose upon it and change it it is both good and bad news the good news is that whatever is physical that is inconsistent with what god has said about you there is a provision by tapping into the supply of the spirit to change it the bad news is that when you are careless about any physical good thing an expression can come from the realm of the spirit and also change it to the negative an example while men slept the bible says the enemy came as a farmer and planted something you went to bed and woke up with something you can't remember going to bed with because the realm of the spirit controls the physical you must master therefore the keys that translate physical realities spiritual realities into physical realities 
you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations you must master the keys that translate spiritual realities into physical manifestations can i tell you your your mastery when we say you are a master spiritually we define your mastery based on number one your knowledge of god but number two your depth of comprehension of the principles that are able to translate spiritual realities into their physical manifestation and that is the measure of true spiritual power i've taught you here that there is a biblical litmus test you know we like to say we are powerful every believer will say you are powerful potentially yes but experientially there are many believers who are not powerful the bible gives us an unmistakable um litmus test to know whether you are powerful or not let me show you for the sake of this teaching genesis chapter one let's look at verse two to four genesis chapter one two to four gives us the ultimate test of true mastery and spiritual power are you ready the bible says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep then the bible says the spirit of god moved or hovered upon the face of the waters verse 3 and elohim said light be and there was watch this now true spiritual power is your ability to say and then it happens and god said and there was it doesn't matter what he said so like god when you rise to mastery to a point where you can say and it happens and god said and there was verse 4 and god saw what he said so you must see what you say and what you say when it appears it must be good these are the conditions the ability to say and it appears it becomes visible to your eyes and it is good that is spiritual power the ability to say and then it becomes then you will behold it because the bible says the word became flesh and then it dwelt among us that which was invisible now gained a material expression and we beheld even the glory of God as of the begotten of the father full of grace and truth so if you are able to say and then it happens and then we see it and it is good you are truly powerful the centurion had this understanding and he came to Jesus and when Jesus said okay let me respect you by reason of your office and come to your house he said no there is something I know for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me I say to one go and he goeth I say to one come and he cometh Jesus speak the word only and Jesus said I've not found this faith I've not found this construction who taught you this who taught you that the true proof of power is the ability to say and it happens that God is bringing us to points where our words are no longer empty babblings and ramblings of men that your words carry power and what drives this kind of result is understanding the spirituality of life please say after me life is spiritual that means for everything that happens in your physical world trying to deal with it spiritually is proof of amateurism immediately are you seeing that many believers never really get to grow and to be strong why because we usually will address the issues of our life primarily from a physical standpoint the Bible is full of many many instances where scripture tells us that our wrestle is not against flesh and blood is that true when jesus begins to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit when god wants to deal with things he starts from the realm of the spirit it is only men that deal with things physically and that's why there's hardly any victory so the financial situation 
the spiritual situation the health situation whatever condition it is the origin is from the realm of the spirit we have the privilege of learning this from the book of job i'm not going there because of time but the book of job theologically speaking is believed to be one of the earliest books in the bible because of the context and i'm not here to do any theological argument about it but the bible tells us that there was this man called job the bible records that he feared god and eschewed evil and then he said at a certain time that the sons of god came to give accountability before the lord and satan was in their midst and there was a discussion between satan and god have you considered my servant job and satan began to speak and said does he fear you for nothing give me the permission to touch everything around his life and he will curse you to your face and he said all right so you go and then the bible makes a very interesting statement he said there was a certain day that means there was a date allocated for that which was finished in the realm of the spirit to find expression there was a certain day it is your assignment as a believer to keep shifting that certain day so that it never manifests in your life that the conclusions in the realm of the spirit that means everything concluded in the realm of the spirit depends on your cooperation to give it a certain day when all that discussion finished in the realm of the spirit while it was happening i'm sure job got up and was enjoying with his children not knowing that time had been allocated for something in the realm of the spirit to find expression you're not gaining mastery will allow many certain days you are not part of why should a discussion happen in the realm of the spirit and its manifestation happen in this realm i become the principal victim and yet i did not contribute to choosing the day you read the book of esther you will learn that it was through divination they chose the day that her man was to strike they didn't just select any day it was a discussion in the realm of the spirit by divination to find what day is most appropriate for this transportation to come unhindered and they chose the date life is spiritual only god knows what god has planned no wonder the bible says this is the day that the lord has made listen 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 there is a day that just happens but there is the day that the lord has made there is a day too that satan has made all of them you can make your day god can make the day prophetically satan can make the day it is up to you to stand and through intelligence make up your mind that that which satan has programmed for me will not find material expression it is up to you this is the day that the lord has made can i tell you many believers have not experienced the day that the lord has made they have experienced days that they have made they have experienced what the bible calls the day of adversary or adversity the day you experience one full day that the lord made you will know his signature will be on that day that this is the day i made and can i tell you mastery can bring you to a point where every day becomes a reflection of the day that the lord has made i will tell you the things that are captured in a day that the lord has made he taught us a few of them in what we call the lord's prayer he said when you are praying remember that a day that i make i will always give your supply per day give us this day our daily bread that means any day you don't see bread in it someone else made that day that if god makes a day bread there does not mean food bread means everything that needs to make you efficient relationships anointings there is a day that the lord has made but just because he made it does not mean you will walk in it striving for mastery this is the day that the lord has made for the bible to tell you this one is god that made it it means there are many other expressions of that day there is the one satan can make ask job job did not experience satan's days every day the day he experienced satan's own we knew that this one it wasn't god that made this day because in one day losses and pain and wickedness and tragedy my question is the day you keep entering who made it 
that your life becomes a plethora of defeat and pain and nothing in it that makes for kingdom come nothing in it that gives god glory the bible tells us this is the day that means see it this is the product that samsung made this is the product that apple made you can see their signature on it there are fake shoes and there are real shoes there are fake everything and the real one and when you bring it before the person who made the day he can point to you you may not even know which is fake or real but they can tell you because there is every signature of authenticity over the product of the original maker there should be something on your life on your day on your destiny we will know that this is the destiny that the lord has made this is the home that the lord has made this is the ministry that the lord has made this is the business that the lord has made show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest i want to give you in this part one two keys there will be extensive keys remember we are striving for mastery so the lord is taking away everything that makes for spiritual amateurism from your life listen be determined in this series that i will lay hold of this thing once and for all i'm tired of being in a situation and not know what spiritual law to engage i just keep applying anyone that's especially what we do blood of jesus fire of the holy ghost we carry a seed we don't even know that all of these principles have their exact there is the exact role that they play hallelujah i made up my mind that i would submit myself to learning and gain understanding and gain mastery from scripture over every aspect of the kingdom life that god will grant me the grace to pursue i still remain to, I remain a student pushing to, towards that mark that price of the high calling but i can tell you so far i thank god for that decision you can gain mastery listen to me ladies and gentlemen you can strive and go into perfection hebrews chapter 6 the bible says therefore leaving this these elementary principles of this and that he lists six of them foundations of the christian faith hebrews 6 and verse 1 it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on to what perfection not laying again the foundation and it lists six of them there are six of them that make the foundation but he says listen you can exhaust them and then go on to perfection the word perfection there is maturity stature let us go on to perfection that means i need to come to a point where my prayer works that every time i open my mouth to pray i'm not hoping it will work i can know that it works are we together imagine if the meal you plan to eat after service now the person cooking it is not sure if the food will be ready or it will be done how would you love to fellowship with that kind of person that with the hunger from service after praying and shouting you rush home and you find the person still wondering is it onion or put first what have you been doing for five hours i'm 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 really i'm not sure i just didn't want to make a careless mistake the person should not be there there are occasions that will only allow room for masters there are realms where you are not allowed to be on practice while you are there you must have done your homework the throne is not for learning no there is the cave of adulam that gives you an opportunity to do your trial and error but then when you are to get to the throne because one mistake on the throne will also be taken as law 
and people will pay the price for it God wants to bring us to greater levels of perfection and mastery let me give you three keys the first key that controls the pursuit for attaining unto mastery haven't understood the foundation that life is spiritual you want to translate realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest in this realm the first key is understanding prayer please write it down don't assume you know what i'm saying understanding prayer i can tell you many people pray but very few people understand prayer there are many believers who cannot tell you the role that prayer has to play as far as their actualizing destiny is concerned people just pray because you were born into a faith experience that prioritizes prayer so when we say open your mouth and pray everybody is talking we're saying all kinds of things and the results show that we are not gaining anything listen let me tell you this generally speaking this this i think um I think we'll have to look at it there's a scripture in my mind help me holy spirit Haggai Haggai chapter 1 I hope I'm right Haggai chapter 1 please give us verse 5 every time something goes wrong in your spiritual life the Bible mandates that's right that you consider your ways it means there is something wrong with your approach we're reading five six seven but let me take it slowly now therefore please go back to verse five it says thus saith the lord of hosts the reason why things don't seem to be working for you consider your approach there is something you have not understood verse six it says you have sown much look at the various conditions that necessitate you considering your ways you have sown much a lot of effort but little results it says you eat and you do not have enough insufficiency you drink but you are not filled with it ye clothe you but there is nothing warm and he that earned wages earned to put it in a bag that is full of holes look at he's describing negative conditions and he's saying consider your ways there is something wrong with your approach the outcomes are a report card that you need to strive for mastery are we together you have sown there's some little results but there's nothing much you eat but you are not satisfied there's insufficiency and then verse 7 he mandates you for the second time consider your ways everybody say the ways of God this is very very important so one of the keys is prayer James 5 and verse 16 let's discuss on prayer a bit if most believers understand the power of prayer I want to quote something here while I was studying for this series I came across a very simple quote by E.M. Bounds for many of you you have studied E.M. Bounds E.M. Bounds was an authority in the school of prayer and he wrote something that is very powerful I want to quote it please listen carefully he said of what infinite importance is the place of the intercessor is the place the intercessor holds in the kingdom of God is it not indeed a matter of wonder that God should give men such power it's a question he said yet there are so few who know what it is and how to take hold of its strength and pray down the blessing of God upon the world. E.M. Bounds. What he's trying to say is that the intercessor, he's speaking with respect to intercession, and he's saying that most believers do not know the kind of power God has given them in prayer and that only few have understood that if believers knew the power that was given to them in prayer how that they can rain down blessings from heaven they can convert spiritual riches and realities and give them material expressions if they truly understand prayer in mark chapter 11 and verse 24 mark chapter 11 and verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray believe that ye receivest them and ye shall have them please look up 
there is nobody who ever gains mastery in the kingdom mastery in converting spiritual realities into their material expression without understanding the ministry of prayer efficient prayer is taught you don't just pray you are taught to pray in luke chapter 11 i think it's luke chapter 11 from verse 1 let's look at it i hope i'm right the bible says and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place the he being jesus when he ceased one of the disciples said unto him lord teach us to pray as john taught his disciples everybody who prayed properly was taught to pray this was not an issue of prayerlessness like you've heard me say it was an issue of praying amiss they found out that they were dissipating a lot of energy in prayer but the corresponding result was not matching that energy and they said there's something we're doing wrong we have watched your prayer life jesus and we see the profound results that come you have gained mastery over the storms over the sea over the sick over spirits and we see you retreat to a place of prayer please teach us what you are doing because we are tired of guessing and jesus began to teach them the subject of prayer can i tell you the truth just praying arbitrarily it will take the mercy of god for you to gain mastery even through that approach to prayer you must be taught most believers do not understand the jurisdiction of prayer and the assignment of prayer in the believers life i cannot teach this enough i see people pray sincerely but very few people can bring forth results can i tell you you've heard me say it nobody leaves what works the reason why there is a lot of prayerlessness and struggle is that believers there's their laxity to prayer is a report card they are telling you i'm tired of faking this thing it's not working it may give me a consolation of feeling spiritual but i don't understand to what end this is about if prayer really works for you you will not leave it He spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. God never prayed as God, but when he became a man, he prayed because men pray. Now that Jesus ascended to heaven as a man, he still prays because all men pray. I've studied the subject of prayer a bit, I can tell you. And my assignment when I study things is to compress them to an expression that is very useful and applicable to the general body of believers. And I found out, maybe more, but in my experience, and I believe it is consistent from Scripture and with Scripture, that there are four major assignments of prayer in the life of the believer i want you to write it and please never forget it no matter how many times you've written it write it down prayer according to scripture has four major assignments in the life of the believer number one the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation in order of priority this is the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life. Unfortunately, most people have not tapped into this possibility that you gain mastery by evolving to superior levels of yourself, even in the place of prayer. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering say prayer you can grow and you can be transformed in the place of prayer i show you a believer who does not engage in prayer consistently forget about mastery you cannot gain mastery in this kingdom if you ignore prayer and if you do not understand the assignment of prayer to your life growth and transformation jude jude 1 and verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost 
prayer builds the believer prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you prayer can turn a very timid canal you into a spiritual version of yourself men ought always to pray and not to faint number two i just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one making requests and obtaining promises this is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises the platform for making this happen is prayer philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god making requests and obtaining promises number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation what is spiritual legislation decrees creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly job 22 and verse 28 thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways it, you shall decree a thing it happens in the place of prayer numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in mine ears so will i do unto you not just as as much as you desire if you speak in my ears i will do it just like you have said it making decrees obtaining promises then spiritual legislation and then number four warfare and intercession the last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31 very quickly ezekiel 22 the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it he said but i found none as a result 31 it says therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way i have recompensed on their head saith the lord these are the four dimensions of prayer i've done this teaching i'm i'm, I'm reminding you for this series that if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom you must understand prayer you must understand prayer men ought always to pray and not to faint and that at any point you pray you are doing one or more or all of these four things engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development obtaining promises is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit in the place of prayer number three making decrees and establishing realities in your life number four engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession at any point you go to pray these are the things that are captured in the prayer life of a believer unfortunately please look up many believers do not pray not for transformation not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions not even to make decrees over their lives maybe they do a bit of it in church and largely most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession no wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for god they love god with all their hearts but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace the wisdom the power of god you must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery I must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle as a lifestyle prayer as a lifestyle not a strategy for disaster management 
prayer as a lifestyle for most people conditions have to provoke you to pray a negative report and you quickly come to pray and satan knowing that when he wants to attack you he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray so he will allow gradually gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised understanding prayer i believe in the power of prayer i am a product of the ministry of prayer we must submit ourselves to the ministry of prayer you must obtain grace from god i pray that you will believe the things that i'm teaching you that a believer who is determined to pray with understanding please take note with understanding i submit to you that in the body of christ there is a lot of zeal people pray and pray and even if you are god the way you see people pray you are wondering why is this person's life like this i can tell you that most of our prayer is not guided by understanding for many believers we think is the stretch and the energy invested that is equal to results it is not so most believers do not pray according to scripture most believers do not pray according to knowledge there is such a thing as praying amiss have you read it in scripture apostle james said it is possible for one to pray amiss he says let that man not think he will receive anything from the lord prayer that every time you bow your knees to pray do you know how much of a blessing you will be if people know that your prayer really works so when you tell them i want to pray for you they are happy there are many people if you say i want to pray for you they just laugh at you because they know that you have not even sorted the subject of prayer you don't even understand what you are saying change that narrative with determination god wants the average believer listening to me to get to a point where you don't just pray but you understand the jurisdiction and the assignment of prayer whilst you are seated in one minute i'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from god you are seated inside you are seated outside obtain grace let it be from the depth of your heart father i obtain grace i obtain grace to fan my prayer altar back in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, someone is praying. She prande kaskede la hasibash, magata prande gede belekosiata. I obtain grace. I can pray negative things out of my life. I can pray the will of God into my life and destiny. You want to strive for mastery, you must understand prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible recommends, listen carefully. The Bible recommends an approach to prayer. The most effective dimension of prayer, second only to praying in the spirit, is praying the promises of God write it down please praying the promises of God Isaiah 41 and verse 21 the Word of God as you know defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer that means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of Scripture let me repeat myself God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. The word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. It says, produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Do you know what this means? Approach prayer like a legal system in the realm of the spirit don't just say god bless me based on what don't just say god change my life you are god that's the kind of prayer we pray lord i'm tired of this situation arise oh god based on what he says produce your cause bring forth your strong reasons that means bring my word to me in prayer the scriptural basis that commits me to 
to move on that wise are we together so the devil is plaguing your family plaguing your life and you say god i'm tired of this situation in jesus name i assure you you reported your situation but you didn't pray what is the basis lord bless me uh -uh. what is the basis even jesus himself i've taught you this when satan came to jesus he said it is written it is written is what gives strength to your prayer it is not what you are saying that gives strength to your prayer it is saying what is written when you say what you want it is not prayer when you say what is wrong it is not prayer is when you connect what you want and what is wrong to what god has said now that is prayer father your word declares that though my beginning be small my later end will greatly increase based on this truth in the name of jesus i place a demand upon the grace that makes for advancement and increase now you are praying as simple as it sounds i can tell you many believers will keep shadow boxing and believing they are praying the promises of god i've taught you here that the word of god contains three things essentially every time you open scripture the word of god is a capture of promises principles and prophecies every time you open your bible you are interacting with number one the promises of god number two the principles of the kingdom number three prophecy can i tell you this if you are a leader here of a prayer group you're a leader here of any prayer platform don't just tell people pray 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 bring the scriptures that support what you are asking if not i can guarantee you you wasted your time Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He would have said, God, this is not fair. He said, remember, I have worked diligently. In other words, remember what your word says about those who serve your house. Can I tell you this? If you know how to bring forth your strong reason, you can go to bed. You will commit God and, and destroy, dislodge anything that is not of God in prayer. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.